Sajib began as an unassuming charity organization run by a then unknown Buddhist nun. Today it has millions of members. The phenomenon of Tsuji's growth has become a popular topic for researchers. In the first of a new series of reports to mark Tsuji's 45th anniversary, we find out from the experts what makes Tsuji different. The Renmin University in China, in Beijing, is one of the most prestigious universities in the country. This is a class for doctorate students. Every semester, a 90-minute lecture on Tsuji is presented by Wei Dedong, an associate professor of the Institute for the Study of Buddhism and Religious Theory. Within the short space of 45 years, Master Zheng Yang was able to lead a small religious group to become an international non-governmental charity organization. I see Tsuji as being the pinnacle of modern-day Chinese Buddhism. In Taiwan, Associate Professor Huang Tianyu at the National Tsinghua University's Institute of Anthropology wrote a book entitled Charisma and Compassion, Zheng Yan and the Buddhist Tsuji Movement, based on 15 years of fieldwork and research in the United States, Taiwan, Japan and Malaysia. Master Zheng Yan has both masculine and feminine qualities. She's also a leader who possesses great authority and motherly compassion at the same time. Also capturing the interest of academics in the United States, the Tsuji Foundation was the first Taiwanese charity organization to have been chosen by the Harvard Business School as a case study. At Harvard University, I spoke about Tsuji's mobilization of volunteers as well as the idea behind the execution of our long-term relief programs. The lecture was a confirmation that Tsuji has been recognized by a world-class management school. Taking Buddhism to the next level, Tsuji has become a popular research topic among scholars at home and abroad. In fact, Sakyamuni Buddha is our teacher who enlightens us about life and giving. His spirit has been faithfully replicated and practiced by Tsuji. Innovating the ancient scripture of Buddhism, Master Zheng Yan realized that the modern-day Buddha should be one of putting compassion into action. Since the moment the Tsuji Foundation was conceived, Master Zheng Yan has been working towards establishing the Tsuji Order of Buddhism, a goal which was realized in 2006 upon the foundation's 40th anniversary. The Buddhist NGO began 45 years ago. Its first seven-day retreat was attended by less than 20 people, but the Dharma found its place into the hearts of the attendees and gradually, over the years, spread across the world in a domino effect. Only by working with people can you come into contact with pain and predicament and apply the Dharma to alleviate suffering by giving practical assistance to those in need. Master Zheng Yan's philosophical lineage can be traced back to her mentor, Venerable Ying Shun's mentor, Master Tai Xu, who reformed Chinese Buddhism. A core belief of Tsuji is the communication of love through contact. The comfort in skin-to-skin -skin contact is wonderful. Buddhism mentions the sense of touch and of how it helps us make sense of the world. Tsuji has taken that idea and applied it on an interpersonal level and has seen the positive effect that skin-to-skin -skin contact, like hugging or pat on the back, 
has on human relations. This notion of physical connection is rarely recognized or given importance to by other religious organizations. I think Siji is the first. Siji's philosophy teaches people to honor integrity and honesty and put compassion into action. Master Zheng Yen's army of volunteers has been working to deliver that message of love beyond the boundaries of ethnicity, creed and wealth. Taking the needy in Taiwan under its wings and giving the same care to disadvantaged people in foreign lands, Siji's power of love is like a current that swirls around the world to comfort, empower and enlighten wherever it is needed. Founded in 1966, the Tsuji Foundation now has chapters and branches in 50 countries around the world. The NGO began with regular donations from just 30 women. As more and more people joined, the scope of the organization expanded, and volunteers also testified to the personal transformations they went through in their service work. But before that, let's find out what prompted the start of Tsuji's regular home visitation policy in the continuation of our series of features marking the NGO's 45th anniversary. Here in the mountainous area of Beitou in Greater Taipei, Tsuji volunteer Lai Meizhi is on a regular home visit to care recipient Mr. Wang. After bringing aid to Mr. Wang during Typhoon Sansane in year 2000, Lai has continued to support him over the years, gradually becoming a close friend of Mr. Wang's. <laughs> <laughs> 74-year-old Lai is a veteran of home visitations. She knows when to be supportive and when to be firm. For instance, there was a time when Mr. Wang, who was a single father, contemplated a second marriage. I told him that he really has to think twice about the matter. It is not easy to find someone who is willing to marry you and help you take care of your family and your child. I care about him, but I also scold him when necessary. That's how it is. Mr. Wang listened and gave up on finding a stepmother for his child. Knowing that Lai will always be there for him, Mr. Wang goes to Lai for parenting advice and looks up to her as his mentor. Tsuji's home visitation program that includes counseling for particularly troubled households was conceived after a tragedy that involved an aid recipient some 45 years ago. Back in 1966, Tsuji's second casework was providing financial assistance to Ms. Lu, who needed money for glaucoma surgery. The foundation gave Ms. Lu $5,000 for the procedure, which failed and left her blind. The case was closed thereafter. A few months later, in an unfortunate turn of events, Ms. Lu took her own life, showing the NGO that financial support may just not be enough. One time her husband bought four small cabbages for her to cook, so she used them all to make rice porridge for their children, and also set aside a bowl for him. When he returned home and saw that there was no fresh cabbage left, he was furious and scolded her for not rationing the food. Miss Lu, who had already lost her eyesight, was so upset that she took her life. Back then, we didn't have a lot of experience in social work, so we didn't check up on her often. But we learned a lesson and after set down the rule that a follow-up on care recipients must be carried out every three months. The tragic incident prompted Tsuji to check up on care receiving households at three-month intervals. As volunteers grew in number, home visits have become more frequent. For the caregivers, spending time with people in need is a valuable lesson in which they learn about suffering and redefine one's blessing. When Taiwan's economy took off in the 1960s, gambling became a favorite pastime and even an addiction for many. Fortunes were lost in these games, leading to many broken families. At that point, Tsuji's stabilizing effect on society became extra significant. Tsuji volunteer Chen Yingji is one of those people who joined Tsuji and turned over a new leaf. As soon as he joined a game of mahjong, he would forget that he still had elderly parents and two young children. I always tell the volunteer brothers and sisters that my wife set me up to do Tsuji. She would tell other volunteers that I'm available to drive them around for home visitations. But it was a setup that I happily played along with. 
Another reformed volunteer is Lin Zhihui, who was preoccupied with unnecessarily suspecting her husband's loyalty. I paid for rituals to ward off any female interest coming his way. I went out of my way to do it, and it turned my family life upside down. But now he will tell his friends that if their wives are misbehaving, he arranged for me to take them to Tsiji, where they will, like myself, change for the better. Looking back, the Buddha's NGO has not only helped the sick and poor, but also transformed those who assume a caregiving role into better people. Siji will continue to exert its positive influence to bring about a more conscientious and loving society. In the last 45 years, Siji's charity work, which started on the island of Taiwan, has extended to serve the sick and poor around the world. Siji volunteers living outside Taiwan solicit donations locally and use that money to help and empower local families in need. The years of community building has had a profound and positive effect on people, as we shall see in the next report, where Tsiji's reputation in almsgiving has helped solve problems in the most unlikely places. A Taiwanese girl was spared from violence in the 1992 civil unrest in Los Angeles, when the writer heard that she was from Taiwan, where Tsiji came from. And in South Africa, where Asians are typically targeted for crime, Tsiji's contributions in poverty alleviation have won the hearts of would-be criminals. South Africa first saw Tsiji in 1992 when it started with poverty relief projects. In the beginning, the Taiwanese volunteers were met with safety concerns. <laughs> There had been incidents where armed robbers chased down trucks carrying Tsiji's aid supplies. However, the situation has much improved with Tsiji's ceaseless efforts and charity. I think Tsiji's logo is like a pass. Even in black townships with the highest crime rates, the Tsiji logo stickers on our cars seems to offer us some form of protection. Brother Jian Song Bo, who is also a Tsiji commissioner, is in charge of organizing aid distributions and always offers his trucks and vans to transport the aid supplies. One day after he left work, a group of robbers was just about to break into his warehouse when the security guard on the duty told them to stop because the warehouse belonged to a man who had been helping their people. The robbers actually listened and left. This great love that originated in Taiwan has transformed the hearts of local people as more and more of them joined the volunteers' ranks. Dear Lord. Mostly Catholics, the Zulu volunteers of the Buddhist NGO actively spread the message of love that knows no racial or religious boundaries. Over the years, Siji's compassion has created a ripple effect that radiates outwards, reaching all corners of the world. In April 1992, a Korean-African American conflict led to days of rioting, violence and looting in Los Angeles, USA. Siji volunteer Liu Shen in Taiwan received a call from one of his donating members whose daughter had narrowly escaped the unrest. She was stopped by an African man who asked her if she was Korean. She told him she was from Taiwan, and he replied, Taiwan Tsiji, okay, and became really polite. He then escorted her out of harm's way and pointed out to her the safer routes. Apparently, the man received help from Tsiji after the 1989 San Francisco earthquake. The connection between the two disasters is hard to establish, but it seems that Tsiji's charity efforts have indirectly saved a Taiwanese girl from danger. 
All over the world, the blue and white-clad aid workers are giving back to their communities, watching over and taking care of those neglected by society. In terms of international relief missions, participating city volunteers are required to pay for their own travel and other expenses. It is a principle that has been set by the city's founder, who stressed the notion of self-reliance since the inception of the organization. Dharma masters residing at the Jingsi abode work for their food, and donations from the public are allocated according to the donor's will. Ciji's 11th commissioner, Tsai Shoumei, has been in service work for 45 years. Years ago, when she was working for the state-owned electric utility provider, she decided to pay for the abode's electricity to help lessen the burden for Master Zhen Yan and the other nuns who had to do menial work to get by. When the master had found out, when she saw me, she said, here you are, Jing Ying. I replied, I'm it for master, I'm here. She then looked at the light fixture in her room and very gently said, you know I don't want you to do this for me. That was all she said, and I understood immediately. She must have found out because it had been a while since the electricity bill had arrived in the post. For 45 years, Ciji's idea and practice of self-reliance and selfless giving have inspired countless people around the globe to put others before themselves to make the world a better place. Ciji's 45 years of history is built on a concrete foundation of love and compassion that transcends the boundaries of ethnicity, creed and nationality. In the continuation of our series of reports that commemorates the foundation's 45-year milestone, we look at the how the world has come to recognize Ciji's commitment to humanity. The United Nations, Time magazine and the Philippines House of Representatives are just some of the organizations that have commended Ciji for its service work. However, Master Zheng Yan reminds us all that the honor goes to all the city volunteers whose passion and selflessness have made this global phenomenon a solid reality. Barely five months into 2011 and already lives have been lost in the space of natural disasters. Earthquakes, floods and snowstorms, the world is crying out for help. The mandatory blue and white uniforms for easy identification and uniformity may have blurred each city volunteer's individuality at face value, but the selflessness is the essence of service work when every volunteer humbles him or herself to a bigger whole. Ciji is a name these volunteers share. In the aftermath of Typhoon Kutsana, which ripped through the Philippines in 2009, what was an emergency relief operation by Tsiji extended into a project to rebuild the city of Marikina. Led by volunteers, throughout the city, Typhoon survivors began incorporating recycling into their daily lives. And after 17 years of charity commitment in the country, in February 2011, Tsiji's work was formally commended by the House of Representatives. It's not just an award, but more importantly, it is stating to the public that our ro role model should be an organization like the Chu Chi Foundation. The organization from Taiwan also stepped into mainland China 20 years ago, when the relation between the two countries was much icier and more precarious than what it is today. The fact that we are a religious, volunteer-based, non-government organization that works closely with people and holds regular retreats make us a politically sensitive group in mainland China. Even under such delicate circumstance, the Chinese government still recognized us as the first foreign NGO to operate with a license in the country. Dharma Master Chang Hui is a monk from Hebei province. He founded the Hongde Homes that runs three orphanages, taking under its wings more than 200 children 
from pullback rounds. When asked what prompted him to launch into philanthropy, he said it was 16 years ago when he took part in a four-day Cixi A distribution in Hebei. He said Cixi's great love and compassion won him over completely, illustrating for him where Buddhism should be heading. In March of this year, Taiwan's TVBS senior news presenter Fang Lianhua went on an assignment as a reporter with the Ciji disaster relief team to Quake Hit Japan while also serving as a volunteer. I think my biggest realization from that trip was discovering that compassion needs to be inspired. It is our duty to seek out opportunities to awaken this love in us. Sometimes when we see city volunteers serving others, we think this is what they signed up for, thus it is their duty to do so. We admire them for it, but at this stage in life, we don't have time for that. After my assignment, I realized that whichever stage we are in life, we need to give ourselves the chance to be inspired. It's God's way of opening a door in our hearts. <laughs> <laughs> On July 19, 2010, the Ciji Foundation was awarded a special consultative status by the Economic and Social Council of the United Nations. Such recognition is a great honor, but also a reminder of the added responsibility towards humanity for the NGO's founder. Zijianjiangde. From Ciji, we can see that a religion should embrace the world and incorporate the needs of this world into its organizational structures. Globalization can also begin at grassroots level, even emanating from Chinese communities. In the words of Master Zheng Yan, Ciji's development from Taiwan to the world has been a 45-year-long commitment to serving Buddhism and all living beings. Its army of volunteers will continue to bring light and hope to the dark corners around the world.